Welcome back to Wizard Super Coach. Unfortunately, I am still sick, so apologies that I sound like uh, Paddy Bouvier, but uh, can't really be helped right now. I'm stuck home from from work, and thought I'd make a video, give me something to do. I've been stuck in the house for a few days, so I'm absolutely hating it. But uh, I'm not gonna not gonna turn this into a shorty story or something like that. Uh, I wasn't going to do this, but I thought I'd I'd continue with the the team previews. Um, now, if you watch my last one, you'd know that being a diehard Crom Nuffy, I could probably give a bit more of an in depth look at at the Crom. So it was a longer video, longer than I intended it to be, anyway. So uh, I'll do Brisbane, Carlton, and if I have time, I'll do Collingwood as well today. I think. Um, Speaking of Carlton, obviously everyone w would have heard by now of the Sam Walsh news. Uh, that doesn't affect me because I was never looking at picking him just because of the buy and I don't trust anyone with back issues like that. Not that I don't trust him as a bloke, but um, yeah, I just, I'm not interested in players that are injury prone like that. Anyone that's ever played footy would know that if you get a sore back or any kind of back injury, it's hell. Like, you can't do anything. So, yeah. I don't know. Wait and see. He might be uh, a buy upgrade or something like that if he's better. But even then, I'd be pretty cautious. Um, we'll start with Brisbane's defence. So, Harris Andrews, you know what you're going to get with him. That classic, you know, key defender. Uh, he's going to hover around that 90 all the time. He's going to suck people in at times, uh, like the 1% that own him here, because he can put up a big score, but yeah, being a key defender, there's also a pretty low floor as well. Uh, Leicester, lockdown defender, not super coach relevant. Coleman, he's a trap. He's going to pull plenty of people in because of his final series. The problem with him and Wilmot and McKenna is that they're all going to take points off each other. Um... Coleman was the one that was the distributor in those uh, last two finals games, but if you have a look, he's not normally, so that could change any time. He's also another one with uh, a low floor. So, yeah, I'd group Coleman, Wilmot, and McKenna pretty much together. Due day at 380k, there's actually a bit of um, value there. I'd say that he's probably going to go back to what he normally uh, averages, which is like low 80s. So there is a little bit there, but really at that price, um, it's not worth it. And who knows, uh, this is his second ACL, I think, so who knows how he's going to come back after that. It wouldn't be easy. Um, I can't really see anyone else that's super coach relevant here. To be honest, I haven't even heard of a couple of these guys. Darcy Gardner, he's he's normally a defender. Supposedly, he kicked some goal, a bunch of goals in the internal trial or match sim or whatever you want to call it, but still not relevant. So obviously, the midfield is where the picks normally are. Dunkley's one that I think is kind of flying under the radar. He's super consistent if you discount the end of last year. And I don't know why he dropped off, but he did. But he still managed to average 115, so shows you that he was flying before that. I thought he'd probably be higher than 5% owned. Um, but for whatever reason, he's not, probably because of the end of last year. I'm not picking him. There's too many other options at that price. I think he's about, he's roughly maxed out. I don't think that... He's going to go back up to what he used to be, like, what, 680k. I think he even hit the 700 mark at some point in his career. Lucky Neil, he's on the way down now. It's not hard, just look at his graph. Um, still going to be a consistent scorer, but I think that he's really losing um, that ceiling. So, McCluggage, he'll be, I think he'll be the one that takes Ashcroft CBAs. Everyone keeps talking about this mystery of who's it going to be. You only have to look at last year. Once Ashcroft went out of the team, it was McCluggage that took the CBAs. So they got within a kick of a flag. I don't expect that to change. Why would Papa Fags go and change that around now if it worked enough to get them to the grand final and almost steal it? So McCluggage at 
4.7 average. I think he actually, he averaged about 103, 105, something like that once Ashcroft went out of the team. So there is a bit of value there. Um, given the buys and stuff though, I'm not picking him, although I did consider it. Um, he's probably one though that you just have to punt anyway once uh, Ashcroft came into the team. And if you've already got like a Crouch or a Martin or someone, you don't want to be having to do that with too many players. The reason I bring up Martin, I guess I'll talk about this now, even though he doesn't play for one of the teams that I'm discussing. I was thinking about this today because he's currently in my team. Is he going to be a top eight defender or top six defender? So even in the top eight, I think you've got um, Dacos, Sicily, um, Stewart, Sinclair, Ryan. Um, I think they're, and Houston, they're going to be the top six. And then the last two two spots there, like seventh and eighth spot, you've probably got um, Sheasel, Martin, Whitfield, and I don't know, I should look this up. There's, there's another one that will be probably fighting for that eighth spot. So, yeah, there's, I don't know, if you, if you think Martin is going to be top eight and you back him in over the others, then he's a pick. But if not, and you start him in the midfield, obviously if you're starting him, you're going to flip him out, right, to the back line. Is it worth it if you don't see him as being top eight? I know there's value there, but it definitely got me second guessing it. He's still in my team now, but um, yeah, I hope you get what I'm trying to say. So Dane Zorko, he's past it. He's old and he's a flog. Ashcroft, he's out for like half the season, so don't go there. Bailey, he's always going to be the one that um, is tempting. He's kind of like Dylan Moore plays that half forward role to perfection when he does get in the midfield he's good but he just never gets there because he's too good at what he does in the half forward flank jared berry he's never going to become what i thought he would and then lions he's kind of interesting i guess um with ashcroft out of the team he could get games but it's kind of doubtful i think that brisbane's moved on from him now there's also a massive sub risk there but if he was guaranteed games, then at that price, um, I'd definitely be picking him. Uh, Dev Robertson, uh, I believe he's injured now. He was the one that people were saying was going to take McCluggage's, oh, sorry, Ashcroft's CBAs, but yeah, it'll be McCluggage, especially now that Robertson's injured. Fletcher and Archie, I don't see them as um, as picks. Fletcher maybe one day. He He looks like he's got good potential. Um, Sharp, no. I don't know who the other two are. McInerney. He just, he doesn't have that scoring ability. He's consistent, I guess. Uh, low 90s. I can't see that changing. I was, I was pretty shocked though to see that he's got like a, um, a reputation for being really hard to score on. And... When I did those videos recently, looking at the points given up uh, by position, even though it was fantasy, um, Brisbane were actually the top three teams for giving up points. So I don't know where that comes from, unless there's a massive discrepancy between fantasy and super coach uh, scoring, which I don't think there is because there's usually quite the correlation. Um, yeah, I don't know what that reputation is all about because it just wasn't happening last year. And if you haven't watched those videos, go, go and check them out. Um, I think you can actually just go to DFS Australia now, um, and check out what they've done. I think they've, they've released the same thing, but at the, at the stage that I released them, um, that hadn't been done yet. Uh, Darcy Fort, no, nah, not, not relevant. Joe Danaher, to be honest, he could probably go a little bit higher than that, I think. But, yeah, key forward, inconsistent, not really interested. Charlie Cameron, again, he could probably go a little bit higher too. The only reason these guys even become worth talking about is because there's so, so little options in the forward line this year. I've never seen anything like it, to be honest. And by the way, I'm not saying to pick Charlie Cameron. 
I just I think he can go a little bit higher than seventy two. Cam Rayner, he's a bust number one pick. I'm sorry, I know that's not even super coach related, but he's just not it. He strikes me as one of those that was bigger and stronger than everyone as a junior, so he bullied everyone and. Um, once he started playing against the men, he lost that edge, obviously. So I don't think he's ever going to be super coach relevant. Even when he gets thrown in the midfield, he just can't accumulate the ball. Hitwood, for all the shit he cops, I think he's not that bad, but he's not super coach relevant. McCarthy, no. It's quite interesting that a lot of the bottom teams have the more super coach relevant players. It's like the, the top teams kind of spread it out more. Um, and cancel each other out. Answorth looked like he could have been half decent at some point, but he doesn't look like he's getting there now. Um, can't lock down a consistent game anymore. Yeah, so that's Brisbane. I, I don't know. I'd be interested to hear from any Brisbane supporters there what they think. So I'll move on now, and I'll do Carlton. Start from the forward line, I guess, and go backwards. Uh, Kerno, can't see him going any higher than that. And again, because of the buy, I'm just, I'm not too interested in any Carlton players, except for one, which I'll get to. Oh, two, sorry. I forgot about Zach Williams. He he is in my team. I think he's in every team. Harry Mackay, he can go higher than that, I think. If he could get his, uh, his kicking straight, like when he won the Coleman and stuff. But I don't bet on that happening. Silvani's out for the year. Yeah, again, there's not much here. Forward line just sucks this year, honestly. Jack Martin, if he could get his shit together, he could probably uh, go a fair bit higher than that. But yeah, he's not consistent enough. Fantasia's is probably going to suck a few wins. See, it's already got three percent here. Um, he can score when he plays. Problem is, he just never bloody plays. Ashton Moyer, I don't know if that's how you say it. Uh, the Glenelg boy here, um, from Adelaide. It's pretty good raps on him. At one stage, um, he was meant to be going top ten in the draft, but he got injured and kind of slipped down. I think he ended up going at around number 30, something like that. If he can get early games, he might be a shout. He's pretty good size and everything. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't be sold on the job security. I haven't actually heard much yet about him, so... These trial games will be interesting. I think a lot is going to change between now and round zero. Because it's... There's no real break now. So, like, the trials start in a couple of days, or the next one's tomorrow, I guess already had one and then it's kind of just like constant the trial games until i think four days before round zero and then obviously round zero is our last our last chance to have a look so yeah it's going to sneak up fast so try and stay on top of it start planning now believe me it will sneak up on you yeah there's no no cult and rucks here that are relevant yet the conning will be um, he's like that prototype athletic Ruckman, but yeah, he's not yet. Now here's where it gets interesting. So I spoke about Williams being in my team. Walsh has just gotten injured with the, the back issue. The one that I think is going to absolutely break out and could go like 120 average or close to it is Adam Chera. Um, he was absolutely flying in probably the middle 10 games of last year and he's only one percent owned here so it's a bit of a um bit of a risk if you do pick him i'm not picking him purely because of the buy but if it wasn't for that i think i'd have him a lot of people are saying about brayshaw and stuff but honestly if i was picking out the two i'm going chera i know he probably can be a little more injury prone than brayshaw but you think he's got to get it together at some point, right? But yeah, keep an eye on Chera. All the stats point towards a big breakout coming. I'd probably have him over uh, Davies Uniac as well, who actually is currently in my team. 
It's just that bloody buy. Uh, so yeah, Walsh, uh, no way, not now. Doherty, I think he'll just do what he does. He'll probably hover around that high 90s, low 100s mark. Pretty consistent, but, you know, he's getting on now. I think he's he's 30, so the decline is on. Crips, no, not anymore. It's too inconsistent. Akers, he scores all right for a wing, but yeah, I don't want a wing in my team unless it's Errol, who's also not in there. Um, hmm, Hewitt suddenly is a bit more interesting. He kind of got pushed out in the midfield in 2023 a bit. If Walsh is injured... I guess it's not a case of Walsh is necessarily going to miss games, though. He's just, he's not going to be 100%. If for some reason, though, that one of them goes down and Hewitt gets back in the midfield, he's a pretty good value there. He's a tackling machine. We saw what he could do in 2022. So, yeah, keep an eye on what happens with the Carlton midfield. Kennedy I had in draft. He's frustrating. He can be really good and really shit, and sometimes that's from quarter to quarter. Can't really see anything else here. Um, Ollie Hollands will be good one day, but he's a bit young yet. So I see Carlton's half-backs here. The problem that Sydney have and the Bulldogs have, there's too many of them. There's too many mouths to feed, so I think they're all going to cancel each other out. Newman was the one that... Um, he obviously did the best of them last year, but... I don't think he's going to back that up. His second half of the year was crazy. The first half, not so good. I think that was a result of Saad getting injured. I had Saad last year, and he was super frustrating. He started like a house on fire, then he did his calf or whatever it was, and he was just never the same after that. And I never got the opportunity to trade him out because I was just forever having to trade out injured players and do other things. Weedering um, and McGovern, they're just, they're not relevant. Williams here, 60% owned. Don't try and go against him. If we go down, we all go down together, but it can certainly hurt you with the way he can score if you don't pick him and he doesn't get injured and starts going back to what he can do, like averaging 90 to 100. Because I don't think there's anyone else in the back line around that price line that can do that. So I'll finish off on Collingwood. Dacos obviously lock him in. I think it's stupid um, people talking about um, doing buy flips and stuff like that, like or trading him out and then getting him back two weeks later and things like that. Are you confident that he's going to be top uh, defender or, you know, top three defenders? If you are, just lock him in. Why beat around the bush? You're just wasting trades and stuff. People are acting like we've got unlimited trades. We don't. It's not, it's not risen by that much. And for every trade that you're making, like that, like an unnecessary one, other people are going to be making upgrades and stuff. So... You know, yes, there are more trades, but you can still only use two a week. Unless you're using a boost, obviously. But, you know, what I'm trying to say is if you're going sideways, someone else is upgrading. So don't fall in that trap. Um, yeah, there's not much here. As I said, the top teams, they're hard because they kind of all cancel each other out. They just do their job. There's absolutely nothing here in the back line. John Noble could be interesting. He could be um, on a real mission to prove himself and uh, show that he was wrongfully dropped for the finals. But at that price, it's just too risky. I wouldn't be going there. Even if he was 100k cheaper, I probably still wouldn't be going there. Jacob Ryan, he could get a run. Um, and if you haven't, go listen to... Uh, our interview with him on the Seven Nuffs in a Serious podcast. We interviewed him, I think it was the week before he was drafted. Um, 
yeah, great young bloke and real friendly. So go listen to that if you haven't. He could be an option, like a, a down downgrade option later in the year, I think. I can't see him starting round one, but we do need downgrade options through the year, though, so keep an eye on him. He's got a ripping mullet, too, if nothing else. Josh Dacos, he could probably he could probably increase this year just a bit. Not enough to pick him, but I can see him going over the 100. Again, all these guys cancel each other out. The most interesting one probably is Finn McRae, who's a forward. I thought he was a forward mid, but um, yeah, I'll get to him. Jack Crisp, he's annoying. He looks like he could be like a full primo on that, and then, you know, he'll have games where he just looks like he's not interested or whatever. I've, I've owned him before. But if you want a player that uh, never misses a game, he's your man. It will be interesting, though, if, if McRae uh, doesn't work out for some reason. How are they going to handle this uh, Taylor Adams hole? Who's going to take his CBAs? Are they just going to like up everyone else's, or is a certain player going to go in there? I didn't know they picked up Jack Bytel from St Kilda. Could it be him? There was talk last year if Bytel pushed into St Kilda's midfield. I know Collingwood would be a harder one to push into for sure, but they obviously got him for a reason. Maybe he should just cover because Adam's left. I don't know. Darcy Cameron we saw last year, he can go big. Um, I picked him early. Once Gorn went down and then he went down like the following week or something, so that didn't work out. But he was absolutely killing it at the start of the year. Um, I haven't really looked into it because I'm not going to pick him this year, but uh, I wonder why his scoring really dropped off like after the injury. Was he just not fit or did Collingwood change the way they were playing? I don't know. Was it Mason Cox? Is there any Collingwood supporters? Someone tell me in the comments. I'm not picking him, obviously, because I'm going Gorn and Grundy and I'm not changing it, but yeah, he's probably, if he could do what he did at the start of last year, he probably is value too, especially if you want to bet against the Gorn and Grundy thing. I wouldn't do it, but you could probably get a fair advantage by going against them and set yourself away from the pack early. It's not like those two are bulletproof either, so yeah, interesting. Lockie Schultz, I reckon he could go up to like a 90 average playing for Collingwood. He works real hard. He plays as like that half forward type. He's going to get goals for sure. I wouldn't be surprised if he scored like 50 goals this year, honestly. Um, he looked good at Fremantle and they were like probably the worst attacking team there is just about. So yeah, imagine him in a good team. He's actually kind of tempting. Uh, given the lack of options in the forward line, it just structurally doesn't really work out, I guess. Elliot, I heard that he may be playing off the half back. I can't see that actually happening. He's way too good at his role. Um, plays way bigger than he is and stuff. He's kind of like an, uh, a bit like an old fashioned forward, I guess. I really rate him. But yeah, not in super coach. Pat Lipinski, he teases people every year. Huge sub risk with him too. My check's not super coach relevant, but he's probably the most underrated key forward in the AFL, in my opinion. Cox, no. McStay, no, he's injured. Bobby Hill. Hmm. Massive, uh, massive ceiling as we saw with his Norm Smith game, but he's also got the really low floor. Um, yeah, I wouldn't be picking him. It's not the kind of game that uh, translates to good super coach scoring, unfortunately. Like his week to week performances, Bo McCreary. There's talk that he could be the one going in the midfield to take Taylor Adams. 
uh, CBAs. I still think it's going to be McRae. But, yeah, I actually could see McCreary being super coach relevant one day. 300k is kind of awkward, though. But I guess there's there's plenty of other um, picks like Fife and that that are around that mark that people are picking. At least, you know, with McCreary, he's got a safer body than Fife. Ash Johnson, he's apparently tearing it up. I was surprised that he wasn't best 22 in the end last year. So yeah, Finn McRae, I've got him in my team now. It's going to be interesting to see how he goes in the trials. I think Collingwood's is tomorrow against North Melbourne. Um, but they are missing um, half the bloody premiership team, so I don't know how much you can read into it, to be honest. The only thing that I look for in these trial games is um, really is the role that they have in the team and job security. I don't think you can really judge too much else. Unless it's like a golden last year that has like three goals and 500 touches against Carlton. Reef McInnes is another one that he could be a shout early. I think he's playing... Um, he's playing the McStay role or something I heard. Which I wasn't aware he was big enough to do, but he could be he could be one to keep an eye on. So yeah, if you've sat through that, you'll realise that obviously I don't know as much about these teams as I do about Crom. I think most people are like that. But yeah, um, if you support these teams, or even if you don't, let me know in the comments what you think. Um, tell me all the obvious shit that I've missed. And as usual, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. It's nice to know that uh, people actually enjoy what you do. It makes it feel worth it. But yeah, thanks for listening to um, to Mrs. Bouvier warble on for 20 minutes. And uh, yeah, see you in the next video.